Yeah, so today is what, May 16th, about to be the 17th, it's almost, almost midnight, I was supposed to play this game a while ago, but you know, sometimes I be in my feels, you know, a little down, and I don't wanna, wanna bring it to the channel, but sometimes it may, it may escape to the channel, but my bad, but either way, <laughs> my name is Mars, welcome to another walkthrough, we, oh, I just hit the mic, sorry, welcome to another walkthrough, we have Sherlock Holmes chapter one, I just looked through the uh, how to play because I haven't played a Sherlock Holmes game <laughs> in a couple of years, and there is a lot to uh, kind of go through. But I'm assuming we can always access this throughout the game. But one difference with this game is there is some combat, which the other one really didn't have. So let's see how that goes. But without further ado, let's jump into this new case with Sherlock Holmes. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the week's long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. All right, I think I have some more new neighbors as well, so if you hear noise in the background, I apologize. It's not my fault I live around idiots, but anyways, <laughs> welcome to some Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. My name is Mars, if I didn't say that in the, in the intro of this video before it started. <laughs> welcome. He mentioned something about ginger, a ginger drink. Uh, when uh, um, Sherlock was sick on the boat, that reminded me of this drink that I had had today. You get it usually from like Whole Foods. It's like one of those probiotic like um, energy shots, kinda. It was ginger and cayenne, and man, that was something else. How do I? To welcome to the game. You use L to move around and press X to interact with objects. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo di Lusso, sir. We just need your signature. Yeah, I was gonna say, this reminds me of like a place in Italy. Is Sherlock Holmes, is he, I thought he was British, but is he Italian or something? Apparently, is he here for his mother's, um, mother's funeral? So is his family Italian? What's up? Where did my friend go? Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes, uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? 
Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. I couldn't hear what he said, but the subtitles popped up. It's one of those games. If <laughs> you saw my other walkthroughs, you'll hear me complain about how when you're not facing the character, you can't hear what they're saying. Why is he not following me? You know, whatever. This is beautiful. Stepping back into... What year is this? 19... 19 something? Can I get a drink? What's up? Would you like a drink, sir? Would you like a drink, sir? <laughs> I'm thinking I have to... It won't let me... Can I... Guess I can't drink on a job. Jeez, whatever. I arrived at Cordonia, the island where I spent my childhood, accompanied by my only friend, John. It is late evening, but I have a room booked at the hotel. I'll simply need to check in with the receptionist. It seems as if I must spend a night here before I can visit my mother's grave. The receptionist welcomed me and said that the room number had been prepared for me upstairs. Gotcha. Okay, that's how you activate this crap. Italian lawyer. Uh, affable. Is that affable? Agoraphobic. So we are in Italy, right? Oh no. Cordonian adventurer, friendly, plays stringed instruments, Welsh actor, alcoholic, why is that not supposed okay, Albanian singer, afraid of animals, okay, Swedish pharmacist, nostalgic, what about you, what's up, what about you, you are a cook, collects pressed flowers, friendly, Greek aristocrat suffered severe blood loss. Okay, what about you? A diplomat, lung disease. Aw. What about you? What about you? Nothing. What about you? German actor hides a gun. <laughs> friendly. A banker, far sighted, friendly. Let me remove this real quick. I could do this weird scan thing. Oh, I can't do it again. Okay, whatever. I want to see what else other things I could do, but I don't want to accidentally pull out a gun or something. Okay, that's a camera. What about... Okay, I can run with this. You see what I mean? Oh, so, so. I've been doing good so far, not cursing. Let me, let me calm down. But it's going to happen with these dumb neighbors. We got the stealing neighbors, the, the loud kid with the kids screaming neighbors and not, I'm not sure which neighbors these are that keep making noise right now but it's gonna irritate me a letter lost in the hotel dear James I read your <clears throat> um I read your what is a treat whatever on the Theorem, okay, with great interest, and although some parts of it still remain unclear for me, I must say that you have done an impressive amount of research. I strongly recommend you publish as soon as possible, for I anticipate a great and wide practical usage of your method as soon as it becomes known. Sincerely yours, Professor Gilbert. Here we are. Who are you? What's up? Friendly, okay. Okay, exit out. What about you? What's up? You're Turkish. Accommodating, alright. I'm here. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Alright, so we are playing a Sherlock Holmes, so of course... <laughs> We're here to visit our mother's grave, and of course, we have to eventually stumble upon a damn murder scene. Uh, the servant told me that my room is not yet ready. I guess I will have to spend some time in the foyer. Uh, what is that? John found an advertisement in the hall. He wants me to take a look. Alright. Hey, 
In the hallway, where is he? A medium, John, haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck in. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. Yeah, he's definitely a little bit different than the games I've played. I wouldn't say he's com he's a dick just yet, but I, I feel that vibe coming from him. <laughs> The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. I was wondering why I was able to talk to you earlier. All right. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Oh, you're still in the mood. I get it. I get it. I get it. Hello, mademoiselle. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Of course. Stop me when you've had enough. There were three people at the table, a couple and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have to find Oh, him. even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Yeah, let's see how good I really am. Let's see. Hmm. Press R1 to concentrate and reveal details to identify your target. Don't forget to pin the relevant evidence. Some clues won't be visible without it. Try to find the former Navy officer. Suicide attempts, oh, 
Scottish pharmacist. Greek unmarried. A banker. Didn't I see you upstairs? Has a seasonal allergy. A teacher. I bet it's this dude right here, but hold on. Uh, feeds stray animals. Okay. Adventurer. What about you? Pharmacist cat lover. Italian engineer, retired military officer. How am I able to get all this information by just looking at them? Like what? What is his? What is Sherlock's power? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. The Navy officer, Mr. Rose, was sitting at a at our table with a noble couple. The men talked about yachting and the lady was fidgeting with the cane. Perhaps she put it aside and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have to, now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Okay. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. And of course he will be in the show. Now how, where is this, where is this? Is it upstairs, is it downstairs, what? Wait, can I go this way? This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves. First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy, that's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke, a joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Well, let's see. Swollen reddish skin. What was the point of him playing a damn piano during his fight? Oh, do do what was the point of that? Jeez. Imagine fashion. Oh, okay, you can say that about anybody in this damn, this damn place. Wherever the hell we at. Doesn't wear a wedding ring. What is that? Okay, whatever. Recently hit someone with force. Of course, we just saw that. A head of garlic doesn't wear a wedding ring. Red face, swollen reddish skin, expensive in new clothes, rich and fashionable, recently hit someone with porous five red nickels. Judging by the hell what is it, heraldic emblem on his signet sig signet? Signet ring and cane. I can be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, a noble Englishman in the habit of visiting resorts to receive treatment for his liver. Oh, his florid face in a case that he has succumbed to the temptations to drink a few shots of alcohol. Perhaps he was unsettled by the seance. By his red knuckles, I presume that he takes boxing lessons to strengthen his physical, okay? Already annoyed by the disappearance of his cane, he is now infuriated by the theft of a diamond, unsurprisingly. Why would he visit resorts, though, for treatment for his liver? Oh, for the seances? What? Ooh. Uh, judging by the okay, visit a board who travels. Oh, off the pick, though. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. That's how I used to do it. How they used to do it. <laughs> Alright. Who travels around Europe uh, squandering his money. It's okay that he has problems out of all. Physically stronger. Healthy, but in a few years' time, he'll be wretched by constantly drinking. He has issues with his temper, and the view that he has severely beaten at least one person quite recently. Anger issues, mixed with alcohol, 
for making me violent person. I will, yeah, that doesn't make sense if he's visiting for treatment for a health problem. But then again, you never know. During these times, they'll probably, I don't know. But we don't know he has a problem with his liver, so it has to be a board. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr. Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret. I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Alright, let's really get into our detective bag. You thought they stole your damn king. What makes you think they stole this damn diamond? Why are you carrying all this crap anyways, you idiot? Idiot. Oh, well, groove. Was, was a 104 carat diamond? Participants could reach it. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm. The ghost was here, Sherry. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. What happened to him? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? He was probably the one playing what was the thing of the violin. <laughs> the violin in the main menu. <laughs> like the little shadow that you see someone playing something. Why does he randomly play instruments? Like, why is that necessary? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? 
My nose is broken. This maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute, Lord Craven, blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. But perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind, Palace Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. Alright, so let me see. Okay, uh, Lady Craven faced the window. During the seance, Lady Craven's place at the table was opposite a window to the courtyard. I'm gonna say this and this, right? Uh, I was pointing at the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. Oh, is that why she screamed? Hmm. Yeah, Lady Craven must have seen someone outside as she was pointing at the window. I'm certain that someone was in the courtyard during the seance, a witness or an accomplice. I should check the area and see if there are any traces outside. Gotcha. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. Can one man lift the chair? Did you really just ask that question? Is was this covered on purpose? Jeez. Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? It adds so much atmosphere. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. The feebleness, you son of a bitch. Oh, but it got me cursing, damn it! Recently scratched something, went something stuck. A heel? This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. I don't know. Something about him, he pops up out of nowhere. And he's doing weird stuff. It makes me feel like he's like a ghost or something. And he, I can only see him like he's in my conscience or something. Like, uh, what's that, Fight Club? <laughs> Angie, it looks like the old man is losing. His bee eyes are being ransacked and his bees are going down one by one. I don't think there is much honey left in staying with the swarm if you catch my drift. Meet me at the docks at noon. We'll do it together. Uh oh. To track someone's movements, first pin the evidence to the screen and then enter concentration mode with R1 to reveal the trail. Sherlock will. So weird trails. You would think it'll show her feet or something. Or the yep, yeah, her feet, yeah. Rose de Moore. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. Size four with a broken heel. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless No. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. This reminds me of the fairy tale, Sherry. Will you find your princess? Help me, please. Hmm. You look like an honorable man. I have some information for you. The sad said that Lucia got a scolding from a chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, miss? Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. 
Tell me, Miss Celeta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I... Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. I won't, but only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. Describe what happened during the seance. Oh, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest, a glowing cloud or a, a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost, a sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. You scared the poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Whoa, okay, so now I'm playing as John. See, now I really think my my um, my guess is right. John has to be like a... See, was John the name of the of his, like his acquaintance or like his right-hand man in the other games? I don't think it was. Yeah, I think John is like a figment of his imagination or something. I don't know. Or John died when they were younger. He's always kept them by his side or something. I don't know. Alright, with enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past, interact with the node to begin and create. Uh, what was it? I just lost where I was. We create an accurate version of events. Here, try to place the seance participants in their correct positions. The center of the seance room has a table for conducting seances. There is a holder where the diamond was kept. A cigarette butt and a whiskey glass were on the table at the place nearest the main door. Opposite the window, a glass of wine had been partially spilled. That's where the lady was sitting. The chair was thrown aside with great force. Lady Craven is barely conscious but appears to be unhurt. She Okay, so she was right there. He was right there. The, the what's the um, medium was right here. What the hell is in his hand? It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching the diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Can you satisfy my curiosity? I would never refuse a nobleman. But I know nothing, sir. Castle can never be invested. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Oh, it's a very new one. So don't have to dare to use drop on people. When you see an ear icon, hold X and try to filter out. Lady Craven word. is not who she That's what I tried to do, but I was too close to her, so I activated it. <laughs> A, a dialogue with her, so my bad. <laughs> my bad. <gasps> <clears throat> I 
I overheard two staff members talking about Lady Craven. They gossip that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. By their observation, she was on the lookout during the evening while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. Hmm. And they just disappear like that. You're here, at last. I didn't do that, I swear. I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Only an hour has passed, and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? Why are they the medium's room and their room right by each other? This is 226. He's in 225. That makes no sense, but whatever. And of course she had it. Of course. We knew that, but of course... And he said he'd been at the bar for about an hour, so we were... How was us checking or looking for that uh, maid? How did that take an hour? It's pretty. Am I missing something? This must but... be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. I think she stole the stone. It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. Lord Craven, you promised me compensation for your girl's misconduct in order to cover the cost of my treatment and quell the scandal, yet I have not received a penny. You know that I lost my job after your false accusations. Now, even after my innocence has been proven, I can't return to work because of my hand injury. If you continue to ignore me, I shall be forced to appeal to the court. Hmm. The plot Thickens. Oh, this is a nice. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Dear sir, I have to inform you that the death, uh, the death investigation continues. However, the ring has not yet been found. We have to free Elo Dupont, the servant, as we were unable to find any evidence of his participation in the crime. We will inform you of any progress in this case, uh, Lieutenant Grove, whatever. 
police, whatever. Aha, uh -huh. a neat hiding place. Why would she conceal all of the... <sighs> hmm, this ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. Yes, the the moth, moth uh, brooch thing that we find in the seance room. Virtus or Dactus Sapit, courage tastes bold. A unique family motto. Fard Rouge, Calomel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress. The mystery deepens. A victim with a checkered past. And poor taste. <laughs> the poor taste. A remarkably simple lock. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. I still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. Dear Luca, I hope you will have time to visit our estate and perform another seance. Since I was last able to speak to my husband through you, I feel that my life has changed completely. I cannot wait until I speak to him again. I am anxious for your visit. Sincerely yours, Countess Lamore. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful. Perhaps even too successful. I am sure this spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. Alright, drawing complexion, skinny, seems malnourished, scratched wrist, uh, fresh scrapes, slightly bleeding, thin elongated fingers, chain and sleight of hand, slight discoloration, used a lot of makeup, bleeding nose, took a blow, took a heavy blow. Uh, Luca Galici is lean and appears malnourished. His nose is bleeding from a heavy punch. He uses makeup to hide the traces of his illness from malnourishment. His hands and thin fingers indicate that he is a skilled. He is skilled at conjuring tricks he used to manipulate concealed items. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrist from a recent and short fight. I think he tried his best as a medium, but his business doesn't go well, and he sometimes has to go without food. His aims have been... Alright, definitely those of a thief. Turning the delicate work of pickpocketing. He uses makeup to hide possible jail tattoos. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrist. I believe he's more... A criminal than a medium. This is his new way of earning money by deceiving the wealthy. Hmm. Look at him, look at him, look at him. I understand you could be trained to be a thief, like you could practice and whatnot, but how does being a thief equate to having thin, elongated fingers, though? I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told you this already. Uh, I am not in the necessary state for summoning. The spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? I... In fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man, but I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh, well, at least I can make the dead talk. 
Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. Yeah, he probably did it. Yeah, yeah. I want to see that gel tattoo, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the, pl the uh, ectoplasm. So let me... I forgot about the ectoplasm. So let me go... Look at that real quick. I'll be back. Can I go to my room? Wait, wait. No, apparently not. How do I activate the ectoplasm analysis? Right, I thought I needed to access my room for the uh, chemical analysis, but apparently you could just do that from the case book somehow. But whatever. Um. Oh, I don't remember this, so what am I supposed to do? Oh, I did it, okay. The reaction shows that it is rubber, latex mixed with phosphorus. As much as this chemical element is dangerous to hold in the mouth, I am quite disappointed. I expected to find something trickier. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? It's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with them? Ah, oh, it cannot be so. That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. And it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Uh, scratches were left by servants while roughly escorting left the scratches on Luca's hands while fighting for her life. What I'm trying to figure out was, was there blood or anything under her fingernails? But they won't let me analyze that. Emma had a history of deceit. Emma was a thief, but made Lord Craven believe that the servants were stealing. She'd done it throughout their trip. Hmm. I don't believe either one is possible. It could have been Luca. With that explanation they just, they just had us read. Or with Lord Craven. Returned to the room just as Emma was hiding the diamond. And then his temper went crazy. Yeah, I'm assuming it has to be Luca. Because they didn't give me... The chance to, the, let me see, to even pick a Lord Craven, let me see. That's, yeah, that's it, that's all they let me do. So it has to be him, it has to be Luca. Emma tried to frame Luca, the medium, for uh, her theft of the diamond, and in revenge he killed her. Luca is a murderer. He couldn't stop himself from killing Emma, even though he could have just told the police everything. Luca fought for her for his life. Given his uh, checkered past, if he were arrested, nothing could save him from a death sentence. And Emma knew it. I would not stop him from being from fleeing to start a new life. Hmm. I'm gonna say bring him to justice, cause if we let him go, and he's still a thief. And someone's about to title on him, then he's gonna kill them. And what? We're just gonna let him slide again because he can't get death row? Or death a death sentence? Like no. No. You killed her. Nah. Come on. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the mouth? I beg your pardon? I'll bet it makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. 
Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Yes, yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... You are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... Ha. I don't know how you figured it out. But yes, I killed her. I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us, stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink. All I suffered while she indulged. Then I grabbed her throat. Murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. If not, you'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. We'll meet again, Holmes. I will get you, in this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the woman who put him in jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. How can you... Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness. So we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything. Even murder. And then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Mm. I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, damn. Well, take one last look at the view. Must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. Ghost of the Past. All right, so we completed our first, uh, our first case, and we got it right, of course. So far, so good. So give it up for ourselves. Clap, clap, clap. But this will be, this will conclude our, uh, our first, our first video for this, <laughs> for this walkthrough. You got anything to say? Sherry, I forbid you to spend another night here. The hotel's reputation won't survive a second investigation. This game does look beautiful. Special. It was always very dark, so this is a very... A very different um different look for Sherlock. He was hot, but this is this is beautiful. Look at this. I was so visit here. 
Oh, look at this. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. What's over here? Beautiful. Alright, so without further ado, my name is Mars. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you, especially if you made it this far. <laughs> but anyways, without, I already said without further ado. What's over here? Alright, whatever. When we get back, we will <laughs> probably start out another invest investigation. I cannot talk right now. Wow. Another investigation. See who else is murdered next. But <laughs> I hope I see you in the next video. So take care. Be safe. And I'll see ya. Say goodbye, Sherlock.